Hello, today we'll be talking about 1S batteries and storage charging thereof. This isn't the first time I've touched on storage charging 1S batteries. I did a video about uh, this thing from the Flying Sandal, which allowed you to charge or storage charge little 1S batteries. Since that time, he's bought out a six port version and has unpopulated spots for BT2 connectors, I think. Uh, and I still use this, it works very well. Uh, but there were some restrictions about it with the type of connectors you get and the fact you had to do all four at once. So there is a new product to look at today and it's from Vifly and it's called the Whoopstar. And the idea of this, if we open it up, is you have individual sockets and you can charge or storage charge each of them to get your batteries to a decent level. And of course it's quite important to storage charge batteries. Basically they last longer. When you put a battery to storage charge, the battery chemistry is at this, this most inert it can be. Nothing's going on, it's at the safest place. Um, nothing bad happens. If you keep a battery fully charged or fully discharged, it will hurt the battery. It will basically sag and you'll get a high internal resistance building up. So don't do it, always try and storage charge your battery if you're not going to use them for a couple of days. Anyway, this is pretty small and it's hard to see in the camera. So let's get a close up. Let's see how it works and let's go and charge and storage charge some 1S batteries. Okay, here we are in close up. Let's just get out of the box again and I can show you the actual box contents. So a little thank you card from Vifly. The instructions, which are pretty brief, but uh, they seem to go through it all. They just fold out like this and tell you what's going on. You've got the actual unit itself complete with this little protector which I'll just take off the screen so I can actually see what I'm doing. Oh that's quite satisfying to take off those. And here you've got this little USB cable. Um, the reason you've got that is because these are the power options. You've got XC60, uh, essentially that takes 2 to 5S. You've got DC volts, um, I think that's 7 to 21 volts and then you've got USB-C here. But the USB-C needs to provide like nine or 12 volts and follow two protocols. Yeah, USB-C wise, it needs to use the PD or QC protocol, which I haven't got any of. I'm gonna be using a LiPo to power this just because it's convenient to do so. Um, I do have DC power, but it would have been useful to know if center is positive or negative. I'll, I'll have to check back with them those guys but what you've got on the top here you've got the BT 2.0 connectors which is what the, the BDFPV people use and then you've got the quite widely used uh, PH2 connectors which is what most everybody else uses in just under there you can see a great big heat sink for doing the discharging and getting rid of all that power as heat so let's get some batteries and let's see what happens when we plug it in and stuff like that first off Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and power this up and see what we've got on the screen. And it tells us our battery input voltage. It's set to 4.2. We've got a switch here so we can go regular LiPo or high voltage. So LV being low voltage. Um, it says it wants to charge at 0 0.5 amps. And we've got another switch here. If we want to go to storage, then we just move it to storage and then it will go to 3.8. So if you're trying to uh, storage charge a high voltage battery, it goes to 3.85, which is good, good stuff there. This button is for either starting or stopping your charging or changing the current. At the moment, we've got 0 0.6 amps and that might be a little bit too much if you've got your typical Whoop battery, this is like, 460 milliamp hours. So we should just be able to short press of this and you see that we're going 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and then 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Actually this is high voltage so if I change it to high voltage. Now one thing to say about this is there's only two connectors, PH2 and BT2. I've got a bunch of these batteries and I just couldn't find them <laughs> anywhere. I don't know where they've gone. So what I was going to do is um, plug in a bunch of these guys. Oh, the other ones I've got are these type, and I forgot the name of these, and I was using these just the other day. Um, if you saw my uh, little RC car review, I popped one of these on with a little, uh, it plugged into an all-in-one VTX and um, camera, so I could do a bit of casual FPV. Now, I, I used to have to make up cables for charging these. I had these ones, which I'd then plug into there, just so I could put it in the XT60 of my charger. So what I probably need to do 
is cut this off because I don't use this anymore for charging that way and put some I've got a bunch of uh, BT 2.0 ends actually I can just make some converters up to uh, to do those I, I guess these aren't used as much these days they used to be quite popular but now it's all a uh, pH 2.0 so why don't we uh, plug a bunch of these in and see what they're looking like. I think these should have been, these are high voltage. So these were put back to um, storage charge, I believe. We'll have a look in a sec and see what they come up as. I'm plugging these in, not necessarily right. This is four, five and six. So these are 300 milliamp hours. The other ones are 450. So what I'll have to do is reduce those how are they coming up so we got they're mostly pretty good apart from this one which is looking at 3.68 so why don't i charge them up for a while what i'm going to do i'm going to change that to 0.3 amps and what you then do is a long press to say you want to charge i'm just going to charge these up to see what happens oh is that plugged in right so the light, you'll notice there's a red LEDs on all of them. Not that you can see it at the right angle. And basically what it means is a red LED means it's charging. A red flashing LED means it's almost fully charged. And then we've got yellow LEDs for when it's on, it's discharging. And when it's flashing, it's about to finish discharging. So why don't we um, just let these guys charge up, see what happens, and I'll bring them back to storage. Oh yeah, the, the other battery where you're going to need adapters I, again this is this is old this is for the real original tiny whoops which were absolutely tiny and had these little itty bitty connectors which i've no idea what we call but they're much much smaller so you will need to make adapter cables if you're running basically anything but ph 2.0 or bt 2.0 anyway i'm going to let that charge we'll see what happens and then we'll bring them back to storage see how that works well something's going on but um, I was expecting to see this red flashing LED and I'm not seeing that. This one here has gone solid to off and it says OK. But at 4.35 or hovering around there, I would kind of expect it to be flashing to say almost done. But I don't seem to get the flashing thing. So I'm just going to wait till these go off or flash or something. And then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, discharge them back to storage. There's no internal timer on here. I don't know how long they've been going. I expect about 40 minutes. That's generally what happens if you charge any battery at 1C. It goes for about 40 odd minutes. Um, and that's about it. So yeah, I'll have a quick wait. I'm guessing these ones are gonna turn to okay fairly soon, but I'm, I've been watching for the flashing. There's no flashing. Okay, they've all finished charging. I did check and I actually watched one of them go from regular charging to okay and the, the led just went off now i'm wondering am i going to have to uh no i thought i might have to um unplug and replug them again for uh storage charging but let's give it a go um we long press storage charging the yellow leds have come on i'm not expecting it to flash based on the other one but this should now go down to 3.85 for each of the batteries. I'm still using 0.3 amps on each just because that is the lowest common denominator. Uh, you can mix all the batteries up. It doesn't really matter if you um, discharge or charge batteries on a, a lower ampage than, than 1C, but that just makes it more friendly to these ones. Anyway, let's uh, let those come back down again and see how it does. Okay, so if there's a problem, there's this, the time it takes. This has been going for over an hour and we've dropped about, you know, 0.3 of a volt, depending where we are. And this is because in terms of charging, it's pretty good. You can do up to 0.9 amps per port. In terms of discharging, it says the the max discharge power is 0 0.6 watts per port, which is a bit of an odd uh, measurement because then you have to think, well, what's that in amps? And if my maths is right, I think that's about 0 0.16 amps, which is, you know, 160 milliamps. It's not the worst thing with very small batteries, but that is going to take a long time to discharge that amount. So this is not something you can bring to storage quickly. It's, it's much better if you've obviously used the battery 
and then it, it's probably below 3.8 or 3.85 and it's very easy to bring that up to the storage charge. Bringing it back down to the storage charge is very, very slow. But um, I shall, after these finish, I shall discharge it a bit more and see if uh, putting to storage charge coming up is faster, which we can hope. Okay, some hours later, it finally finished. Um, what I would say is if you're gonna discharge batteries, you're better off just doing a quick couple of flights in a quad. In terms of bringing it back to storage charge, I think we can get a much better um, idea of doing it by coming up to the storage level. So what I want to do is find a couple of batteries. Might need to fly some, but um, see if I've got some that are under and then see if we can bring them up. That should be a lot quicker, we hope. Okay, I found some other little 300 milliamp hour uh, high voltage cells and these are a little bit down I don't know if these were like previously flown or possibly I put them at 3.8 and it's dropped a little bit typically you know if I'm hard on these things they come in and they'll be like 3.3 3.4 uh, but this is more sort of reasonable that we have to bring it back up so I'm going to go ahead and start storage charging those and I would expect them to come up a lot quicker I'll take a quick note of the time here and uh, we'll see how long that takes. Yeah, it definitely seems more reasonable this way. We're only about uh, seven minutes in. Everything is showing 3.85, but the lights haven't gone off yet. So I guess it just keeps putting a little bit of current in just to see if it's gonna fall down at all and go to like 3.84 or whatever. But yeah, it seems pretty solid. Coming up, not a problem. But if you're at full power, my goodness, don't use this to come back to storage. Fly something on it, then come up to storage. Definitely the better idea. And all done and all back at 3.85. Perfect. So there you go, not a bad little product. It certainly does the job. Um, it's fairly easy to use, which I guess is a good thing. I would have kind of liked a, a few more features, I have to say. For example, being able to charge this port at 0 0.4 and this port at 0 0.3, that would be nice. Being able to mix the fact that I want this high voltage in standard LiPo, for example. Uh, but I guess these all add complexity and add price. And certainly one thing that would have been much better was the ability to discharge at a higher rate. So as it stands, as a discharger, I'd say, oh no, if you've got a full battery, don't use this because it just takes too long. You'd basically shove it in a whoop and you'd, you'd fly it for three minutes or two minutes just to get it down to a reasonable thing. If you've got batteries that are sort of under like 3.3 and often we murder those little batteries for tiny whoops. Um, <laughs> I've seen them dip down to voltages I didn't know existed in these batteries, but they seem to jump back. Anyway, if you've got them under 3.8 or 3.85, then this is great because this brings up the storage really quickly and you'll be able to zip through, you know, because if you're out flying at an event, you, you might be doing like 12, 20, 30 batteries and you'll be able to get them through them pretty quickly. But yeah, pretty good. And you can get it from Vifly's website. It's about 30 bucks at the time, right? It was not bad, and it's sold for a bunch of other people that might be local to you. But I'll have some links to Vifly's website down below. Anyway, hope that review's been helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.